Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Rugged Medicine YouTube channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about history taking, particularly about the ample model and what it entails and how you can better use it. History taking models, there are various ones around. The most common one or very often cited as the most common one is ample or sample. Then there is of course the medical model which is quite popular here in the UK. You can follow the patient care record, which is what a lot of people choose to do. Look at the paperwork, look at the laptop, the tablet, whatever they're using and go what information is needed next. So I'm just going to ask a question about that. The problem is that if you don't have that paperwork to guide you, you are going to skip something. And the traditional winging it, just asking whatever comes to mind, depending on what the patient presents with. Personally, I recommend using the ample or sample model that I'm going to discuss now because it is the easiest one to remember comparatively and the medical model in itself is quite complex, but it does offer a lot more information than ample or sample can obtain for you. So ample in itself has got five key elements. Allergies, so what are they allergic to, medication, food, etc. What medication are they taking? That has to be over-the-counter and prescription. It can't just be one or the other. You always have to ask about both. Don't forget about herbal remedies because some people take, be it garlic, be it zinc, be it multivitamins, some of which can interfere or interact with medications, so it's good to be aware of that. Past or pertinent medical history, PMH. The last meal, last bowel movement and last urination because that can give you important information about um, how likely they are to be at risk of aspiration or whether you know whether their kidney output is sufficient at this time or whether they have a bowel obstruction, for example. And E, of course, being the events that led up to them calling 911, 999, whatever the emergency number is or the way you were alerted. However, we need to make sure that we actually cover all areas of the history and that is where we need to add something into ample and that means we have to expand the history section. Now in order to ex extend or expand the history section we need to use another acronym because otherwise it's just like the medical model you have to simply remember it all. So we're going to use Crenzon, which is why this history taking model is sometimes called Ample Crenzon, because the Crenzon fits in under the P for past or pertinent medical history. So what are all the letters? Well, those are taking you through all the systems you should be asking about. C is cardiac, R is respiratory, endocrine, neurological, surgical, occupation, and natal. But obviously you can't just ask the patient, hi, do you have cardiac problems? Hi, do you have respiratory problems? Do you have endocrine problems? And so on. Because you're probably not going to get the type of response you require because people don't know what these term ex terms exactly mean. Which means you want to give some examples, you want to give some specific questions in order to explain to people what sort of information you're looking for. So you need to give them examples. With cardiac, of course, if you say, do you have any heart problems, that will already open you up to getting answers about the cardiac system. But without examples, people might not exactly know what it associates. So ask them about ever had an AMI, so a heart attack, suffer from angina, had stents fitted, have high or low blood pressure, hypo or hypertension. Respiratory, ask them about asthma, COPD, pneumonia, chest infections. Um, you could even ask about a chronic cough, for example, if that is one of the things you've noticed that the patient's got, you can ask them specifically about the history of the actual cough. Endocrine. That is all hormone related, which means you want to be sure that you give them some pointers. The most commonly asked one I've noticed is people ask about diabetes and then that's it and then they move on. But Hormones are involved in a lot of things, which means you want to ask about diabetes, you want to ask about thyroid problems, you maybe even want to ask about Addison's disease or any other imbalances based on hormones that you might be interested in. Neurological, ask about strokes, about mini strokes as they're sometimes colloquially called, so CVAs, TIAs, but remember neurological also includes psychological because it's also in the head, it's based on the neurological system, so you want to ask about things such as mental health, which may include stress, which means anxiety. Now obviously you don't always lead with that, you have to interpret the situation and then see how you're going to phrase those questions. Somebody slightly more vulnerable or unstable if you want to call it that, will have to 
be questions in a different way than somebody that um, where you have no concerns about that. Surgical, that is of course not just surgery that has recently happened and when we say recent, some people say two years, some e people asked five years, some people asked further back. In general, two to five years appears to be a common bracket. You also want to ask about recent doctor's visits, hospital admissions, um, or specialist clinics that they may have attended for their particular medical condition. O, occupation. You want to find out what they're doing for a living. Now that's not always relevant, but if somebody's got an occupation where they may be exposed or that may exacerbate their current condition, you would want to know about that. Like some COPD, COPD patients, they may have had a job that exposed them to dust or chemicals or things which was the original cause, which means then you know it was an occupational cause, not something that was triggered by something very recently. Natal, that's of course only to female patients. Are they pregnant? Have they recently been pregnant? And of course, if you're treating pediatric patients, you want to, of course, you, they're not going to be pregnant, but you want to ask about things that are related to natal, related to uh, the process of birth or straight after birth or in that um, time frame. So that would include problems during birth, um, vaccinations, or any other specialist visits, uh, specialists that they've literally gone to within the recent time so that you can understand whether there's a trigger an underlying cause or something that is under investigation. Now ample crenzon you will also sometimes see a sample and the S in front of the ample stands for signs and symptoms. Now that is a helpful way to just review everything that you've assessed in terms of the history and then put it in context with the complete medical history and the events leading up to them calling the ambulance. Um, and that means you can put signs and symptoms ahead of that and then go the signs and symptoms were as follows short of breath pale sweaty lightheaded and then they're not allergic to anything they take medication for the following then you go into the pertinent medical history last meal last outs last ins and uh, events that led to them calling you or you being called to them so ample crenzon gives you a nice overview in terms of history the thing it doesn't do is ask you or give you a pointer towards asking about things such as social history, for example, whether they're living alone, whether they got carers coming in, for example. So those are ones that this acronym doesn't cover. But once you've got this framework in place, you've got a pretty good understanding of what is going on in that patient's life and with their medical history. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll hope to see you for the next one. Bye for now.